Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with a new podcast. We are on this number 77 of the Mr. Informal podcast. I hope you are doing well today. I am too, but it's really hot. As you know, it is a long weekend. Uh, Labor Day will be tomorrow, but stay at home. Nothing to do, I guess. Nothing special. And so, uh, these are the four topics for the Mr. Informal podcast. And so, again, these are the four topics. We are looking at J. Crew, Adidas, Stripe, arguments, or J. Crew. Uh, Adidas is actually questioning J. Crew's Stripe uh, copyrights, so we'll get into that. Number two, Forever 21, thinking of bankruptcy. Chapter 511, that's going to be interesting. Number three, s- social commerce rises. What I'm talking about is Facebook, uh, e-commerce, even Instagram, stores, all that good stuff. And then number four, data hires. What I mean by that is, as you know, data is really important. And a lot of these fashion brands are hiring uh, data analysts, uh, metadata coordinators, even data scientists. What that could mean. and what kind of drawbacks does this have because I'm gonna get into that and so those are the four topics for today and don't forget to add me on Instagram M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L and then check me out my website at mrinformal.com M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com and so let's go ahead and start the podcast and so this article is from Guess who? Yahoo Finance. It's been a long time since I've been in this website. But basically, the article says that Adidas is trying to stop J. Crew from trademarking a five stripe design. So, Adidas is famously a bully uh, by um, Alexandra Roberts, an intellectual property lawyer and associate professor at the University of New Hampshire School of Law, told Yahoo Finance it has sued tons of competitors over the years and it frequently ends up that lang which is true last week as law 360 reported adidas filed a notice of of opposition to j crew's trademark application for five stripe design that could apply to a wide range of retail items including apparel and other goods adidas opposition cites the numbers of its apparel items that it argues also use that design including shoes hats jackets and tank tops roberts explained that once i mean upon j crew's filing adidas kind of raised its hand and said not so fast check out 20 plus registration that covers three stripes across all categories already not only that adidas might also say what if you don't register it as a trademark what if you just go ahead and use it she said there's probably some case for compromise so here we go again adidas targeting people using stripes Seriously, look, and here's my problem with Jake. Why are you even copywriting this? Why, why not just use it? I really don't get it. A five stripe versus street stripe is totally different. But I know Adidas has been trying to sue everybody using the stripe designs, and I, I don't really like them. But I just don't understand this from Jake Crew. If I, I mean, Here's a, another thing is that uh, you can buy Adidas at J. Crew. Not only that, we've had striped shirts before. So again, what's the point of this? And look, from J. Crew's side, I see it as, you know what? What is the point of this? Don't even copyright it. It's just a waste of money and waste of time. Just use it. There, there's nothing to worry about it. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to avoid adidas from suing them because adidas does this adidas has done this with other brands before where they have two stripes four stripes six stripes and then 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 they suddenly go and sue everybody for some reason i don't know why yes it's true adidas is a bully when it comes to stripes i don't get it i don't remember adidas owning the stripes even in the beginning stripes been with us for so long even from the ancient civilizations I mean, the natives have done it, the Mayans, the Incans, the Egyptians, the Romans, 
the Greeks. I can go on and on. But again, I just don't see the point of this. If I was both of them, I would just not even bother. And if I was J. Crew, just go ahead and use it. And if Adidas is trying to do something, then that's when I would show you know what? These this company is a bully. He certainly is a bully. I wouldn't be surprised. And so let's check out topic number two. This is from Bloomberg Business. Forever 21 prepares for potential bankruptcy filing. Wow, unbelievable. So the article states that Forever 21 Inc. is preparing for a potential bankruptcy filing as the fashion retailers cash dwindles and turnaround option paid according to people with knowledge of the plans, which means inside. The company has been in talks for additional financial and working with a team of advisors to help its restructured debt, but negotiation with possible lenders have so far stalled. The people said, focus has thus shifted toward securing a potential deb uh, debtor in possession loan to take the company into chapter 11 they said even some window remains to strike a last minute deal that keeps it out of court unbelievable wow so not only that if the chain were to close a significant number of stores as part of the restructuring its landlords could have trouble filing the vacancy in the Annapolis based Simon counts for 21 as its sixth largest tenant including excluding I'm sorry about that department stores with 99 outlets covering 1.5 million square feet according to a filing of as of March 31 unbelievable so where do we go from here see I knew this was coming Look, whenever you go to twenty four hour twenty one, too many too many clothes. It's filling up. You barely have a walkway. They're ordering too much. They're producing too much. They need to slow down. They need to make quality goods. Okay, you're a fast fashion, but create also create some quality goods. I mean, the more the more you spend and the less you're earning, it's pretty obvious that you're spending more than you're earning. Well. If you look at a balance sheet, then it's pretty obvious that you're going to have a lot of debt. That's accounting 101, just so you know. Man, in 2009, 10, 11, 12, or 21 was rising quickly. I mean rising. But we knew the quality and we knew the amount of orders and they are so cheap. It's pretty obvious that they're gonna run into this problem so where does Ferrari 21 go from here well I think that they should certainly restructure from what they said uh, also reduce the amount of stats that you are producing reduce your turnover get rid of your inventory ASAP even if you have to lose money just sell it at a lower price certainly close, uh, close a lot of sto uh, close certain stores that are not meeting quota or that is you have a uh, forever 21 then a mile away you have another forever 21 you should that should not be a good way to have stores you should have at least allocate stores so they can meet quota not just both of them are not meeting quota because well you have a store that's so close to each other so man you see another, another company that could have this this problem is H&M Zara at Love Culture I mean any type of fast fashion so any target could run into this problem because they are they are also fast fashion they are turned around same thing with Walmart they could also restructure their fashion department and so there's a lot of different chain of reactions around here and chain of events that could happen and for our 21 will not be lonely but for our 21 thinking of bankruptcy unbelievable wow i mean it hasn't even been a decade since they rose i mean i truly wish they could do something but i would feel sorry for the people who work in forever 21 and so 
let's check get ah let's get on with topic number three. Uh, it's on retaildive.com. The title is Social Commerce Sees the Highest Adoption Among Retail Tech. So social commerce is the most popular new retail technology among US internet users ahead of visual search, augmented of virtual reality, and voice commerce through smart speakers for BizRate Insights, cited by eMarketer. So check this out. More than one third, 34% adults said they uh, they had made a purchase through social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, up from 29% last year, another 27% said they were interested in social shopping. So they found. Not only that, only 13% of the US internet user had shopped with visual search, but 52% said they were interested in the technology. AR or VR was used for shopping 60% of online adults while 39% say they were interested in, in the technology 39% Wow so another thing is that meanwhile a snaps a snapchat last year added a shopping channel to the discover section of its image messaging called shop and cop in Pinterest, Pinterest in June expanded its third-party partner program to support more shopping experience so this is interesting so that means that you got to have a website, you got to have well, on eBay obviously, and you got to have a Instagram page, a Facebook page, a Snapchat page, or even uh, what I mean. Basically, if there's a social, a Twitter page, a social media, then there should be a shopping cart. And it is interesting and you know what this is actually quite powerful if you see an influencer or a celebrity or anybody have the same clothes you could easily buy that clothes ASAP right away you don't even have to go to a different website which make things much more convenient but at the same time you know your privacy is not gonna be the most important because they're gonna know what you're what you like and what's your type but wow, think of the money. Are you kidding me? 39%? I mean, 34%? It went up from 20, 29%? Are you serious? That's a lot of money. Not only that, you're giving the social media a lot of power. Because now when you start selling through them, obviously they got to have fees. It's the amount of money being generated here is a ton. So certainly if you are looking for work, especially if you are in the fashion industry, maybe you want to look at through these companies. Since you're still being in the fashion industry, the only difference is, is you got to set up the page for people to shop. That could be a graphics design. That could be an e-commerce specialist or whatever it may be. So uh, let me read you the third paragraph. So, visual search which uses computer vision technology to help people identify things with their smartphone cameras appears to have the most potential for greater adoption. Google and Pinterest both have visual search features called Lens aimed at helping mobile shoppers find products which means marketers need to develop an optimization strategy to be discovered on the platform. Compared with social media, Visual search is still in its infancy and will likely gain a greater adoption as more consumers become more familiar with the technology. So, as technology improves, as people evolve, certainly you may not ever have to leave your living room to shop and to buy online. You may not even have to go to Amazon. That's the thing. You don't even have to go through these. Just stay in Instagram. Go shopping around what you like, boom, 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 done. That is so convenient. So, fourth topic. So, data hires. So, what I mean by this is a lot of fashion companies, even uh, technology companies, marketing technologies are hiring data analysts, data hires, I mean data scientists or metadata coordinator, whatever it may be, basically create tags, uh, meta, uh, metadata, uh, what else um create reports uh sees forecasts creates charts trends analysis all that stuff so i'm just going to talk about how it relates to fashion okay 
So how it relates to fashion is that you're looking at the keywords, you're looking at which is the metadata basically and see what, what people are searching for, what people like, what is this person uh, into, what kind of words, keywords are people searching. So when you look at, so when you have your website, then people will go to your website based on the keywords, so and so, which is good. Uh, it creates marketing, it creates unique visitors, it creates a um, uh, leads, it creates uh, more clicks, I guess, it creates more um, exposure, which is everything good. And you can plan and you can plan out your business, you can structure your business based on the data that you've had. But here's the thing: here is the thing, the biggest flaw in this. Uh, data analysis and having all these data the visualization you cannot predict that just because a person likes a skirt or a pants doesn't mean it tell uh, that person is gonna like all kinds of pants that you have this person might like suede pants and you didn't even have that in your charts so you can't predict so this is why fashion is always hard to predict when it comes to data because fashion is all about visual visuals and not only that, in when it comes to these things, you cannot predict what's the new trend. You can't. Again, it's all visuals. So when a person's working in data, sometimes they may not even have the visual talent or the visual experience to be in fashion. All they know is numbers. All they know is words. That's it. But they can't visualize it. See, that's the difference between an account, uh, an accountant or actually no no this is gonna be a bad, a bad example so that's the difference between learning about it then doing it see when you're learning you're, you're knowing the information but when you do it it's totally different so when it comes to these companies who are hiring people do the data you got to have at least hired these people to have a good visualization and big good visual aspects for fashion because again, fashion is really hard to quantify. You can quantify your order, you can quantify the amount of sales you can do, but you cannot quantify what people will like and what and what would the new trend be. You cannot quantify that and I hate to say that, but it is what it is. And so uh, we'll see how this goes. Obviously, it's good for the fashion industry, you know, people hiring more people based on data, based on tech, and which is good. Te uh, technology is also making fashion much more convenient and certainly creates exposure when it comes to the online presence. Again, it's positive, but the biggest flaw of this is going back to the visuals. So every company that you know of whether it be Louis Vuitton, whether it be Forever 21 that we just spoke of, is going to be doing the same thing. They're gonna hire these people, they're gonna, and these people will create uh, create a database, create the foundation, and create the show, uh, the upper management visualization when it comes to charts. I'm talking about charts, okay? Uh, the forecast, uh, where are we going? So these upper management can basically structure or uh, cater uh, their businesses to these datas again these are numbers but remember you cannot predict things when it comes to visuals because fashion is quite visual and so that basically concludes this Mr. Informal podcast that this is the 77th edition of the Mr. Informal podcast again don't forget to add me on instagram m-i-s-t-e-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l and then my website mrinformal.com that's m-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l.com and hopefully you learned something today if you have any comments let me know and so i will see you in the next podcast Bye bye